Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mike from Black Rifle Coffee Company. I'm here in my Phil Craft Survival Studio. Today, we're talking about fighting off the X. Now, I want to talk about fighting off the X and the importance of physical movement to ensure your survivability. Remember, static shooting on flat ranges kind of builds bad habits and scars because what we see in self-defense is movement is synonymous with survival. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about surviving by fighting off the X and giving you tactics to ensure you could do that properly. All right, guys, so here I am. I got the pistol. This is a Glock 17 simunitions pistol that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate this. Some of the important factors in trying to wrap your head around movement should be thinking about the shooter's perspective. So let me give you the example. If I am a shooter, let's say you're, you're on the other end of this. You're the good guy or bad guy, play it how you want. But if I'm the shooter, if I'm standing like this with my simunitions pistol, I am the apex of the cone. What I mean by that is if I need to deviate in this cone from left to right, Let's say this is a miss. If you're moving in depth or out of depth, let's just call out of depth, that's a miss and this is a hit. It requires minimal movement for you to accomplish um, moving in towards the target and out away from the target because this is the only deviation that you need. Miss, hit, miss, hit. So it's nominal at best. And what I mean is if I'm this big of a target, and I'm confronting you, and I move back even 25 yards, I've gone from this wide to like this wide. Not a lot of deviation required from the shooter's perspective. But if you take your physical ass and you move it this way, and you blade your body and you bounce out, what happens is the shooter is now required to track you. And the disadvantage is, if I'm sitting here and I only have to deviate, I don't have to move my body. But if I have to track your movement, I have to drive the pistol to a certain point, and then I get to shift, shift my hips to accomplish that. Most people don't train for that. And let's, be, let's just be honest, let alone the best shooters in the world, including USPSA Grandmasters, Special Operations guys, we don't have the opportunity a lot to train on moving lateral targets. Now, bad guys move for real in real life, so I'm advocating that as a good guy, we should train for real moving off the X. So here's a couple things before I turn and demonstrate on the target. One, the toes, my feet are gonna determine the left and right limit via my left and right toe, but also the direction of travel. So let's say I'm confronting you standing here, shoulder width apart. Well, my left limit's here, my right limit's here. The reason the left and right limit are established to the toes is because if I try to push harder over my left toe, I start to get less ergonomic in my movement, but then my hips want to turn and then it requires me to step out of place. So you should set yourself up for success in the first place by widening your stance. A lot of people shoot very narrow like this because the target they're shooting is right in front of them. I'm advocating for you in self-defense in confrontation is opening your feet. This is a self-offense tactic in self-defense because you're thinking through problems actively or proactively, which means you have the advantage, the offensive advantage. I also want you to think about the direction of movement that you plan to bail off on. Let's say the direction of travel I want is to the left. Well, I would want to orient my left toe to the direction of travel. Because if I'm set up here this way with the pistol in my hand, as I go to move that way, it requires me changing the direction of my left toe to move in this direction to break off the X. Well, if you're already set up that way, you're already loaded and you're in the confrontation with a wide left and right limit with my left toe in the direction of travel. If things do happen, I draw my pistol and I'm already set up to move in that direction while I can engage the threat. And so I'll demonstrate right now on this target. So back in the holster, I'm in front of the target during the confrontation and I'm being offensive. I'm mitigating risks like, hey man, relax. My hand is out in front of me. 
My left hand is near the bottom of my clothing so I could draw my pistol. And my uh, direction of travel toe is driven in the direction of travel. And my gait or my position in my stance is wide open, left limit and right limit. As it evolves, I decide that I'm gonna use deadly force and the criteria is met. I flip the switch, I transition to my pistol. As I'm moving, I drive the gun off and then I get to a point where I move laterally off the X. I want to force that shooter to drive his gun and move with me. And what I always recommend is once dynamic, always be dynamic. Or once you go dynamic, stay dynamic until the threat's eliminated. What I mean by that is once you start movement, continue to move. Where I see a lot of good guys getting injured or potentially killed in gunfights is because they fall in love with this static idea. They stand planted waiting for the threat in this left to right limit, not even 270 degrees, but like right here and right here across their toes. But when you're working against a fluid target that's adapting, potentially flanking and maneuvering you, you have to be adaptive as well. So you continue movement, continue sight hunting and searching in self-defense, which I believe is a self-offense tactic. I know those are a couple pro tips, a couple tidbits, but I hope that's helped you understand the importance of movement. If you're moving, you're synonymous with potentially surviving. So I always encourage you at the end of your training session, even if you're shooting static on a range, do some exercises that get you used to using that fundamental, but with movement. All right, guys, till next time, stay alert, stay alive.